Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise of South Austin, Texas. The party's over, the clueless morons are heading back home and uh, being a Monday morning, this is the first day of spring 2017. We're heading to 87 in Austin on the first day of spring. That would make it Monday morning, March 20th, 2017. And so before your old un homeless, unemployed, depressed collapsitarian faces reality now that the party's over and tries to put his life back together after the party, I'm just going to do what I do every Monday morning as the segue into the rest of my life. And that's to bring you my economic meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on to the finance pages of the mainstream media, the Yahoo News finance pages, to see how the global industrial economy is pulling down all, pulling out all the stops to take down this planet. Good guys, good God guys, I've got 24 stories here. I'm barely just going to have time to read the headlines and maybe the first sentence to uh, to whet your appetite. But I'm actually going to start off, all kidding aside, with a good news story about Donald Trump. And you know, all these people saying I trashed that boy. Uh, anyway, cats off to Donald Trump. This is the number one story on the from CNN Money on the business page. Trump won free trade zero. G20 drops pledge to fight protectionism. The world's biggest economies have dropped a long-standing public endorsement of free trade at their first meeting with the Trump administrations. Yes, there you go. Uh, so they've now softened their statement. The formal statement issued after the meeting <coughs> contained only a bland reference to quote, working to strengthen the contribution of trade to our economies. So, uh, of course, Donald Trump is against the TPP and all of these things for all the wrong reasons. But, you know, the ends justifies the means. Thank you, Donald Trump, for saving the planet. But not everyone's on board with Donald. <coughs> Here is why China is backing globalization. The, uh, let me get out my no shit Sherlock button. China is backing globalization for one very simple reason. According to Allianz CEO Oliver Bate, whatever that means, the country absolutely needs globalization. Shit, yes. Uh, this is, uh, uh, here, here's the explanation from Mr. Bate. Mr. Bate. Uh, the interesting thing is not, is it's not because people are nice. People are rational and intelligent. They need it, meaning globalization. <clears throat> As China is moving to an economy that more and more depends on global trade in an active role, <coughs> not just as an exporter of pieces, but of goods and services. And as they go into other countries, it gets a lot more dangerous because the country does not have the experience and how to operate in different cultures and other environments. Yes, uh, there, there you go. I could go on with this, uh, this excellent analysis of why 
China needs globalization, but good God, as I say, I've got 24 stories. I could do a whole rant on this. This is nowhere for me to dive into this uh, story from the, from the Christian Science Monitor, this hilarious story. World Bank takes on pernicious beliefs <laughs> as the largest global actor for uplifting the poor uplifting the poor the World Bank has wondered for decades why certain harmful beliefs persist in hindering its progress towards uplifting the poor uh, anyway guys uh, so what they do is they, they go through these pernicious beliefs uh, the, the, just these myths about the uh, the World Bank I guess number one on, on, on the list is this pernicious belief that it is the World Bank it is the banksters behind it all okay starting with these motherfuckers at the World Bank and their little clones of the International Monetary Fund. It is the World Bank that has put and kept billions of people in poverty and more importantly, uh, taken out this planet. Uh, I think John Perkins uh, wrote an entire book about how this shit works called Confessions of an Economic Hitman, where, where Perkins went in and, and explained all of these pernicious beliefs, the, which are absolutely true about the fucking World Bank. They're not pernicious enough. Anyway, moving along from that unadulterated horseshit here on the business page, uh, let's go over to, uh, oh yes, I've already touched on this, uh, I think a couple of days ago. Global energy CO2 emissions could be cut by 70% by 2050. This is according to the International Renewable Energy Agency, I bet. Uh, of course, to help achieve this, the share of renewable energy and primary energy supply would need to increase to 65% in 2050 from its present 15%, and this is assuming $29 trillion will be uh, invested into the sector. And, uh, <clears throat> You know, this is all tying in to how the, these bullshitters out there, and I don't believe a fucking word of this, you, you know, about how CO2 emissions are already leveling off. Yet, what did we see the past two years as CO2 levels from humans are leveling off, we, we see the, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere at record high levels. So, so either, it, it's one of two things at this point, guys. Fuck 2050, let's look at 2017. Either uh, we are not, humans are not leveling off their CO2 emissions, uh, which is what I believe, or let's uh, assume that they are, well, if, if, if we're not putting more of this shit out there, yet it's going up uh, by record amounts every year, it only tells me we have hit a, a fucking tipping point on this planet where uh, from here on out, it doesn't matter what we do. Uh, the end of the world is baked into the cake and we're fucked. But anyway, uh, let's just dive in to see how uh, how we are doing here on, on the first day of spring in 2017 to cutting our CO2 emissions by 70%. We're going to start with big oil, I guess, and then go from big oil to big coal. 
So let's dive into what big oil is doing to cut humans' CO2 emissions by 70%. Uh, you know, many stories uh, about how the uh, about how the shale oil boom is going through the roof. Uh, you, you know, is... Anyway, let's just re dive in here. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. The first issue that has dragged oil prices down is that U.S. inventories have continued to rise this year. As of March 10th, commercial crude oil inventories in the U.S. totaled over 528 million barrels, up from 492 million barrels a year ago. Uh, as, as the shale boom just goes completely uh, here is one from Business Insider, oil slides, meaning the price in oil slides, as U.S. production shows no, shine, no signs of slowing down. Uh, the price of oil is weaker this morning as U.S. oil production uh, shows no sign of slowing down. On Friday, data from oil field services company Baker Hughes showed that the oil rig count rose for a ninth straight week as the oil rig count last week clam climbed by 14 to 631, which is the highest level since September of 2015 and every one of the new rigs were horizontal rigs. This, you know, uh, the, the close cousin uh, to fracking. Uh, all the new rigs were horizontal rigs. The types that created the huge output levels in America's shale boom. No shit, Sherlock. Let's go up there to Alaska, where we see huge oil find could save Alaska's oil sector. So this is a Spanish planet eater. Spanish oil firm Respal just announced the single largest onshore oil discovery in the United States in three decades. <clears throat> Uh, a 1.2 billion barrel find on Alaska's North Slope. Restball has been actively exploring Alaska since 2008 and finally hit the big one. Yes, uh, hoping the, the Spanish oil drillers hope to have the oil flowing by 2021 as uh, the planet reduces its uh, CO2 by 70%. Okay, let's move over there to Thailand. Armed with $11 billion, Thai oil giants hunt for investments. This Asian, en the Asian energy companies sitting on the largest hoard of cash outside of China are ready to put it to use. This is Thailand's PTT exploration and production uh, and its parent company have nearly 11 billion dollars uh, in their pockets, burning a hole in their pocket and the explorer is ready to spend uh, on projects and exploration acreage to rescue declining oil and gas reserves. There you go, but they should probably 
hold a few a few dollars of that 11 billion back because we have this headline right next to it Indonesia plans to sue Thailand's oil company over 2009 oil spill huh Indonesia is preparing to sue a unit of Thailand's PTT exploration and production over environmental damage from the Montara oil spill in 2009. Uh, this is a class action lawsuit filed by a group of about 15,000 Indonesian seaweed farmers seeking more than uh, 154 million dollars from uh, these planet eaters to cover damages from that oil spill when about 30,000 barrels of oil were estimated to have spewed into the Timor Sea. Uh, there you go. Okay, from Thailand to Libya. Anyone who thought the, that Libya was out of the oil game, Libya ports prepare to ship oil as workers return after clashes. Libya's major oil ports are resuming operations and preparing to export crude oil again after a two-week halt in shipments due to military clashes and the holder of Africa's largest crew reserves. I guess that little war is uh, on hold for now. So we're going to go, as long as we're over there talking about oil in Africa, let's go over there in South Sudan where they're having that big famine. Uh, what's the latest news out of South Sudan? South Sudan rebels seize four oil workers and demand the firm's exit. You go, South Sudanese rebels. South Sudanese rebels this morning, Monday, said they had kidnapped four oil workers, including a Pakistani national, in a bid to force their Chinese and Malaysian consortium to leave the country. Good luck on uh, on that uh, on on that little pipe dream. Okay, from uh, the famine racked South Sudan to the famine racked Somalia, Somali security forces that freed pirated ship say NATO must do more. Yes, yeah, Somali officials whose forces free to hijacked a hijacked oil tanker and its crew said on Sunday that NATO ships must do more to prevent the illegal fishing that locals say sparked the latest attack. Uh, good God Almighty, guys! How many, how many uh, dots are in this goddamn story? I, I could sit here and spend the rest of this beautiful day trying to extricate this mess, drawing the dots between illegal fishing, hijacked oil tankers, uh, starvation, and famine, and uh, NATO. Of course, Somalia is going to start calling in uh, the big guns, the global police state, to start, uh, you know, where are you, NATO? We've got oil tankers and, uh, and commercial fishermen to defend. I I anybody who doesn't get all of this. Uh, this, as I say, guys, it takes a little bit of work to figure this out, and you need to start this, doing some work on the finance pages. What else is the World Bank up to? 
uh, this week. The World Bank has a lot on its mind this week. How about World Bank announces $57 billion financing package for Africa. The World Bank on Sunday announced $57 billion in financing for Sub-Saharan Africa over the next three years. Uh, and of that total, $45 billion will come from the International Development Association. Uh, anybody who does not understand what a $45 billion investment from the International Development Association means for the continent of Africa and for every species of African that humans share the planet with. I don't have time to get into it now. It is a death sentence. A $45 billion death sentence on every single uh, species of our fellow earthling living in Africa. Anybody who does not understand how the fucking World Bank is, to, is still one of the biggest planet eaters on this planet does not need to go any farther than that sentence to pull your head out of your ass. I remember Terence McKenna, Terence McKenna applauding the World Bank for being uh, stewards of this planet. This shows you how, how far it's gone uh, when Terence McKenna swallowed their bullshit. Anyway, moving along, let's go from over to Big Coal. Uh, again, anybody who thinks that King Coal is dead on this planet let the uh, mainstream media finance pages uh, explain something to you. So, uh, this is how King Cole is, uh, is dying and how the planet is going to reduce their carbon emissions by 70%. Here's a few examples of how that's going to unfold on the planet. Adani to begin work on Australia mine by August. India's, anybody who does not understand the dots between India and Australia, India's, this is a this multi-billion dollar uh, planet eater, Adani Enterprises says work on a giant coal mine near what is left of Australia's Great Barrier Reef will begin in August despite mounting environmental opposition to the long-delayed project. Yes, this is the controversial 16 billion dollar Carmichael mine destined to become one of the world's biggest coal mines has encountered numerous hurdles but it looks like they have shaken off the uh, shackles and uh, been turned loose uh, as the country of Australia whoring for India. And so uh, next to that story, we have Bloomberg uh, looking into the great mystery of why resource rich Australia cannot keep the lights on. So this is talking about Australia, the supposedly first world country uh, is, is having trouble keeping its own power grid running. So how could this be? Well, let Bloomberg give you the, the answer. 
uh, to this. Uh, why is this true? Uh, well, let's see. I don't, this is a long story. Uh, Anyway, the reason is, I'm sorry I don't have it. Here we go. Finally, uh, for anybody who does not understand this, uh, the increased domestic gas supplies are being exported to Asia. Uh, no, no, it's not just, it's just anything that runs a power plant. The reason they don't have enough enough of this planet-eating shit in Australia, which already has, I believe, Australia has the single, the world's largest per capita CO2 emissions on the planet already. The reason that they're facing all of these brownout and blackouts in, in their own power stations is because India and China have already bought up all of their fossil fuel reserves to ship off to Asia to run their power plants. Uh, thank you, Bloomberg, for pointing that out. You could have pointed it out a little farther up in the story than halfway through it. Anyway, from Australia to Czechoslovakia, Czech Energy Group bucks green trend the green trend check energy group bucks green trend with bet on coal there you go bucking a trend set by its european peers to divest from coal the check energy group eph is buying coal-fired power plants across the continent, not the country, the continent, to the dismay of environmental environmentalists lobbying for a phase-out of fossil fuels. Uh, yes. Already, its annual production of more than 100 million megawatt hours in its coal-fired power plants in Britain, the Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Italy, and Slovakia, enough to power around 30 million homes, makes EPH the seventh largest power producer in Europe, and they are betting on coal. Uh, okay, from Czechoslovakia to China. This Chinese coal miner declares special dividend now yields 20%. Uh, I don't have time to get into this. But uh, basically what it's talking about uh, is China's shares in China's single largest coal producer, Sheshua Energy, soared 15.4% this morning. The biggest coal miner in the country of China, their stock rose 15 percent this morning is the bottom line this is how china how china is uh is saving the planet and weaning itself off fossil fuels all right what's going on here in our own country u.s judge signs peabody bankruptcy exit after environmental deal. A U.S. judge formally approved Peabody Energy Corporation's plan 
to emerge from bankruptcy late Friday after the coal producer struck a settlement with the U.S. government over legacy environmental claims. I, I don't have time to, to get into this whole story, but uh, the, the bottom line of this one is, is that Peabody Coal, now uh, under the Trump administration, is just is just shrugged those pesky little environmentalists off their back. They've they've struck a deal with the federal government so they can go right on about their business, <sighs> cheering on Donald Trump. What's going on with these Planet Eaters Duke Energy? We just talked about how the, the, this Chinese Planet Eater stock up 15% uh, this morning. Duke Energy, not quite as good as them, Duke Energy stock up 3.5%. 3.5% in the past month. Uh, and another good uh, way to earn money in the end times. This is Hambone stock tips for the end times. Put it in to Duke Energy, these uh, Chinese coal miners, these Indian coal miners, these Czechoslovakian coal burners. U.S. shale is a, God, is a damn good place to make money in the end times. Anybody believing this horse shit uh, that, that this planet is, is weaning itself off fossil fuels. Anyway, from fossil fuels to the global food energy industry, I've already mentioned this one a couple of days ago. It bears repeating, you know, about how uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is, is out there promoting aquaculture fish farming as a way to save the planet as Leonardo DiCaprio is going around cheering on fish farming as a way to save the planet we have these endangered seals these endangered monk seals over in Hawaii uh, getting trapped in uh, the nets of one of these uh, fish farms as the federal government here in the U.S. gets ready to, in, to approve millions of acres of our public lands in the Pacific Ocean to more fish farming. I got many chuckles out of the many stories. Brazil tainted meat probe <clears throat> widens as trade partners study impact. Brazil's tainted meat investigation is widening beyond the borders of the world's biggest beef and poultry producer as trade partners begin their own probes to ensure the safety of the products on store shelves. So federal authorities revealed Friday uh, about 40 companies uh, have been involved in illicit activities such as bribing meat inspectors to approve the sale and export of contaminated meat and adding chemical substances to mask the poor quality of the product. Uh, Anybody who would eat a goddamn uh, steak from Brazil deserves everything they get. What do I got? Three more headlines. Again, I uh, got a chuckle out of this one. Plaintiffs in U.S. lawsuits say Monsanto ghost wrote Roundup studies. Employees of Monsanto company ghost wrote scientific reports that U.S. regulators then relied on to determine that a chemical in its Roundup weed killer does not cause cancer. Farmers and others suing the company claimed, uh, claimed in court filings. Uh, the no shit Sherlock uh, 
the company has denied that its products cause cancer. Uh, yes, but anyway, uh, so what, what it's talking about, if you don't know the term ghost written, uh, they were supposedly, uh, y you know, independent scientific reports claiming that Roundup does not cause cancer. They were written by Monsanto employees who, whose names never showed up and were relied on by the watchdogs. Uh, y y you know where this is going. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, I just loved this headline some for some reason. Buried in Ethiopia dump landslide. A young man and his dream. Yes, this is looking at one of the people uh, killed in this garbage dump landslide. This was 16-year-old Biniam Alamene. Uh, he had, the 16-year-old Ethiopian student had dreamed of becoming an engineer inspired by his country's booming economy and the tall glass buildings mushrooming around his home city of Addis Ababa. But he will never live his dreams of becoming an engineer in Africa because he was buried in a land in a garbage landfill landslide. And uh, we are gonna wrap up with our friends at PETA. Watch PETA activists outside the New York Stock Exchange rake Canada Goose, some uh, planet-eating company, Canada Goose over the coals for its use of fur. It was not the most ideal IPO day for high-end coat maker Canada Goose <laughs> as they got their goose cooked by PETA. But anyway, guys, I've got to uh, wrap up this week's uh, economic meltdown roundup around here on the finance pages of the mainstream media and I got to get back to my own economic meltdown in my own life as I face reality. I think I, uh, I have a small job dragging some sticks to uh, for Austin's big brush day so maybe I'll make a lunch money putting my five years of college to use uh, making a big stick pile out in the street and I think I have to uh, get a motorhome inspected uh, by the police state. Another day in the life. So I gotta get. Bye guys. And I gotta take my little dog on a walk. On a walk in the end times. Yes, we're going to take a walk, and then we're going to get back to figuring out our life. <laughs>